Hey everybody, Anna Sabramowitz here. You are in for a fabulous treat, my lovely learning designers. Um, Alexander Salas is coming up with me. We had a fabulous chat. Let me, if you haven't heard of him, let me give you a little bit of a, a bio overview. He is an instructional systems developer and e-learning designer with over 14 years of experience specializing in the blend of learning technologies and gamification for performance outcomes. And since 2007, Alex has worked in every facet of corporate learning and performance enablement for Fortune 100 enterprises like Philips, Centene Corporation, and Dell Technologies. He's the owner of Style Learn, an e-learning design firm helping clients of all sizes, and he's also the Chief of Awesomeness at e-learning Launch, the online academy for digital learning professionals. When he's not creating amazing learning experiences, you can find Alex giving back to the community at large with free workshops and conferences. And we mentioned a, uh, a lot of cool tools and resources uh, during the interview, so I will make sure to put those in the show notes. Um, there's a, He's very candid. Uh, I learned a lot from this conversation. I hope you do as well. And if you enjoy it, uh, make sure that you uh, make sure that you either take a screenshot if you're enjoying this on your phone or something like that, and make sure you tag us on LinkedIn because that's where Alex and I hang out. Uh, make sure you tag us and let us know what you found valuable or if any of the ideas uh, gave you some ahas. All right. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, Alex, thanks so much for joining me. This is awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy guy, but um, I knew you couldn't say no. Come on, it's me. <laughs> of course. Of course. Awesome. Anna, Anna is, you're, you're, you're one of my favorite four-letter words of everything. Oh, <laughs> that's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. Aww. Off the dome. That just came out. That's amazing. He's here all week, everybody. He's here all week. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, okay. So I'm, I'm basically, you know, for the next, uh, next half hour, I'm going to put you in a, like a hot seat. So all right. now <clears throat> instructional design is your game. Now, as far as when you started, were there skills that you developed over the years that you feel are like super essential and you wish you had them at the very beginning that like, I'm, because I'm thinking your audience is, and my audience is also like, not only just newbies, but also people who are maybe in a career that they've kind of let stagnate a little bit. So I want to know exactly like if, if at this point you're like, man, this is a skill that took me some time to develop, but I wish I had it earlier. And now it's like something that's essential to, to what I do every day. Of course. Yeah. So I, I would say that <clears throat> I think uh, systemic in, instructional systems development, that distinction from instructional design. Okay. Talk to me about that. That was that was the that was the thing, and I didn't get that on the, until I started looking back into whatever I thought I learned. Right, so let's mm. let's give it give you a little journey. So first of all, I was in the Navy as a new as a Navy veteran, helping people take their tests and stuff as just as a hobby. Right, so that was the that was the getting the aha moments from people, getting see them to succeed. That kind of got me into like, oh yeah, I want to. This is a job training and development. <laughs> hmm. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, this is what I'm going to do when I get out. Right. Great. So I went and got a degree. Right. So, you know, like most people, oh, good, good degree. So I got a degree. I was getting a degree in health education. And then we hit the education part. <laughs> we hit the learning theory part. And I was like, God, this is fascinating. What is what adult learning and da, da, da. And so in, in health education, it's like super line because in health education you're just trying to change people's behavior oh yeah right? it's like hey you're addicted to cigarettes <laughs> you know first of all i shouldn't say addicted right so <laughs> the first thing <laughs> is what you're gonna like completely reject everything so yeah so that that kind of emotion like how do you manage how do you understand behavior how do you get people and guide them not only you know you can't just do it with logic right emotion is what leads to a lot of things and, and then I was like, okay, so I'm going to go to the master's in training and development, right? It was a master's in education with training and development concentration. I think at the time, 2000, we're talking 2006, 2007, I didn't really, well, at least in my radar, there wasn't a lot of instructional design as it is today is popular, you know? So in terms of programs and things like that, or at least I didn't remember seeing that. So at that point, everything I learned was education based. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not what really addresses business problems or systemic problems. Yeah, I get that. You know what I mean, you know, what I mean by that is like, if you make a course, 
And you, if you pick a topic and you make a course, you're doing education. Yep. But if you look at a problem and you see tasks that need to be done and environmental constraints and impacts down the line and beyond whatever the learning event is, then now you're thinking about instructional systems. So an instructional system. And that's where kind of, that's what I wish, you know, from the beginning I had that. It was a mis big mis misconception that still many professionals have today. Like, what is Addy? You know, everybody says Addy and they throw you the five labels and then from there, there's no more talks, right? That's right. It's done. <laughs> you know what's Addy. I know what, yeah, you know, you know what it is, right? So that's, uh, I started looking back into those things and I started, you know, I found the, the original models that brought that up and where it came from. And so that, that gave me this revelation that, you know, many people in our industry, even though they might have 20 years in there, they might not really know the stuff in depth. So I, found yeah, that I wish I would have known that from the beginning. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's cool because I'm subscribed to your blog and you get into those deeper theories all the time. Like you're like, Hey, you guys check, you know? And I was like, Oh, I haven't read about this one in a while. And it's cool because you're right. People throw Addy around. Like it's the, you know, that's it. You guys, I follow the, you know, and they, it's always in like everybody's LinkedIn. I follow the Addy process and I'm like, yeah, but I worked with military people too. And they're like, Addy. So I can't believe civilians use Addy. <laughs> I've right, heard that right, before. Yeah. Right. So, right. um, cause it's so it's, it's such a, it's almost like a project management model. It's not a learning model. Like you said, emotions, right. Huge. Mm -hmm. I get yeah. that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, really, it's just a generic, a lot of people, the, the, oh, the model. Well, it's, it's not a model. It's a framework. Yeah. So, and it's a framework, meaning that you don't have specific, you know, you have guidance. When people talk about it in framework is, you know, there's not specific guidance and steps and things like that. So when you look at a model, there is the inner service procedures for instructional systems design. And that's your mo that's the model written by you know researched. I think Gagne was in the back end. I had I did an interview with uh, where uh, Mr. Branson, Robert Branson, Dr. Robert Branson, who passed recently passed away by the way. So I was probably one of the last people to interview them, view him in in capacity. He was out in Mexico. Um, so, but it's so interesting because it really addresses like you know even. So now what we have to face is Addy was in 1977, 1976, uh, where Addy came from, right? Into that model. And it worked great for, for military schools. Because see, th there's a gap that no, we, no, nobody talks about. And it's yeah. the fact that instructional design was so based in school stuff because it's studying in school museums, mm -hmm. right? So it's all like, like almost like children, children's science museum stuff. And even children's children science museum stuff is actually more fun because you know they have more, a lot of more hands-on. Oh, stuff, hell yeah, right? it is. I go to right? children's museums. It's the, yeah. the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, it's interesting that we go into like business stuff and now we, you know, because sometimes we don't get people prepared and develop the way they need to. We repeat what we experience in life. And that's, you know, you went to school. Somebody told you what to do, when to do it, how to write it, and you know, and then just do it, right? But it didn't really have a connection to anything else. So we have to have a balance and everything. And Natty, you know, it's 1977. So now how did you adopt and modify things? Because now we got the internet and we have digital apps and we had different me me methodologies, mechanisms that were not available then. Mm -hmm. So that's the interesting piece. So yeah, I mean. If I would have known that from the beginning, I would have been a PowerPoint assassin uh, when I started as a facilitator. You know, I was a PowerPoint assassin. Uh, although I, was, I had creativity, I was a PowerPoint assassin. Hey, wait, guys, hold on. We got another 30 slides. Can we go on break? Hold on, hold on. We got another 20 slides. So, yeah, I mean, I made the mistakes. And I'm, I'm, in L&D, usually you don't hear this, right? You don't hear people in L&D going... I suck or I, I used to suck or yeah. <laughs> everybody's always effective and efficient and you know I used to suck. Stories. I still suck every day. 
<laughs> and then so that you know bringing it back around i wanted to say like you're saying like yeah that skill that's a hard skill like the analysis piece that's that's a that's a hard one still that's still something that you have to practice and kind of get into and so i wouldn't say that everything is 100 percent. i don't think it ever is i think i always you'll find a new way to finesse it and, and spend less time and i think mistakes and the mistakes that happens with your clients, with your projects, if you reflect on those, then it helps you with different things. Managing SMEs, I mean, that's that's another one, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to ask you about that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, <laughs> that's yeah. on everybody's mind. I feel like that's oh, yeah. always, like, we could have had this probably because this conversation like a decade ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, and I love, I love the fact that you were sort of the, you were sort of the pioneer role model for a lot of people where you were jumping on YouTube and you're breaking out the board, the whiteboard, and you're going at it like on your own, like, oh, there goes that again. And that was pretty cool. That was, that was awesome. Was like, um, all those videos are golden and not a, lot, not a lot of people know about them. So thank you. And that was also for me, like, really, that's just me trying to figure yes. it out. And you, you get like, even when you talked about old projects, like I have, you know, you have, a, I bet you have like, four or five or however many that you're like, oh man, I wish I could go back and not mm -hmm. have that. Or they just like, that mm -hmm. was a great lesson, but I still carry it with me in the wrong way. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you got to go back and reflect now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So this perspective has shifted for you now. It sounds like you're correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're now approaching it from a, instead of this is the content we got to share to, this is the problem we're trying to solve, what's going to help us do that. Now, yeah. as far as that development process for you, like how has your process evolved over the years? Like I know when I first started, there was things that I thought were very, very important, documents that I thought were very, very important to have um, and produce that now I'm like, nobody needs that. Nobody reads that. Is there stuff that you have that has like added or subtracted from your process that you're you, over the years? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, one of those revelations, I mean, I call them revelations and I usually post them on LinkedIn and people, you know, sometimes it doesn't hit people the right way, but I mean, <laughs> it's, just, it's one of those things, right? When you, you don't want to hear the truth sometimes. Yeah. It's like, Hey, you're, you're 450 pounds. You're fat. No, I'm not. I'm big bone. <laughs> you know, I'm so, fluffy. Yeah, I'm fluffy. Uh, so, um, yeah, that you know, like Bloom's taxonomy. It's, it's one another one, right? So, it's like you were saying about Addy and and Bloom's taxonomy. And I have, I think, I'm, that's going to be my meme that's coming out. The next one I'm going to put out is going to be your like, is the is the Bloom's taxonomy. I'm gonna I'm gonna find a way to use the whole branding of baking soda. And just call it Bloom's taxonomy. So, <laughs> Bloom's taxonomy is the baking soda of LD. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah, that's no, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, like, hey, do you have a problem with uh, engineering? Bloom's taxonomy. <laughs> just, pepper it, just pepper it in there. Yeah, you can you, you solve that problem. Magic dust. Put on the magic dust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your, your learning <laughs> outcomes suck. If they're not relevant, magic dust. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, add yes. some action verbs. So I, I say, yeah, as long as you can grab an action verb, beautiful. <laughs> you made that tur shine. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, yeah, we can I, we can go off the off the cuff here a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I was totally no. Actually, that one I can completely. I was there. I was oh, like, but it's one. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like you know, I started, and all you heard was that, and then. The thing about it is you, if you are able to think critically and question what you do, that's when real learning starts happening. And so if you can question your own bullshit, <laughs> that's what I'll say. Oh, yeah. Then you can get to a real place where you go like, ah, well, oh, that's why that doesn't work. Oh, okay. And so... Yeah, um, you know, managing SMEs is the other one, right? So like in the beginning, you're like, hey, we're meeting here. We're together, right? You guys are professionals. Yeah, I'm professional. Yeah, you're professional. I'm professional. Okay, great. Look, uh, this is what we're going to do. This is what I need you to do by next week. And so I'm just going to give you a link for the repository so you can put your stuff in there on Tuesday. Then, you know, we're good. And then I can start looking at things and working on it. All right, great. 
here comes Tuesday, nothing happens. So, <laughs> so, and you send an email back or sending it before and you're like, hey, uh, how about this? Did, did, did you get the stuff yet? Or you're like, oh, no, no. Or you get another office reply. So you kind of learn all these lessons, right? Where you're like, okay. Um, hey, listen, how's it going? We're going to get started this project. Today is different, right? Today is like, so when can we meet so we can discuss the things that we need to talk about and do and this and this and that? Yeah. Sometimes you may get lucky and you have a goose me that does the stuff, but you definitely have to corral people there, right? So because mm -hmm. they still have a job and stuff like that. So nothing's going to be like, let's get together and let's hatch it out. Bring your stuff. Let's talk about it <laughs> rather than, oh, yeah, grab everything you have content related and put it in there. And we'll, I'll take a look at it and then we'll go from there and I'll give you an outline and then we'll go from there. Yeah, because you're not going to be at the priority of your people's lives. That's huge. Lessons learned. That's lessons huge. Learned. Yeah. So do you come? Okay. So that's massive because I think a lot of us are like, the project is our priority and we think everybody else feels exactly the same, right. but it's like right. such a small, so how do you like, so is this mindset you come into the, your projects with your like, they're going to fail me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think you have to, I think it's, uh, it's like everything else you just, prepare for the worst and hope for the best type of thing. So, how do you, how do you like, so what are your strategies for saying, you, you know, you, when you know, or the, there's a possibility that your project will definitely be impacted by somebody else's lack of participation. And then and not to say that there's anything wrong with people. The SMEs are just other humans with really busy you know, right. jobs. Right. So, of course, yeah. so how do you mitigate that risk? Yeah, that's the thing. So I usually, uh, I think context is super important, right? So it's different if you're working in an enterprise or if you are a consultant, you know, if you're doing a gig, uh, working with a client. Because, you know, uh, the longer that project goes, the less, you know, the, the more time you're going without getting paid. <laughs> so, um, so I usually now, today in these days, I don't do a lot of work um unless i get 30 percent of the work up front so you know i don't do work i don't start i don't move a muscle i don't click anything until there's some money in my bank account something mm -hmm. right so now we get skin in the game and then the other parts that i learned is like uh i learned some big ones like you know you have to make your own contracts right sometimes or you have to use some kind of app or if you don't have the fortune the fortune of i guess spending money on a lawyer um so, you know, learn things like, you know, don't put dates in contracts because those are never going to stick. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, hey, we're going to lose 30 pounds by October 1st, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, after I ate my brownies on Saturday. <laughs> and so, um, Diet starts the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Monday. It's uh, 27 Mondays, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you you... These are lessons you learn just by you, you, you fall on your face and do it. Luckily, I do a program now that is pretty aggressive. It's called the Enterprise ID. So it's yeah. basically based on this. It's based on these experiences, right? And I put people through the same BS that they were encountering, let's say, through work or dealing with a client, you know, changing SMEs, changing scope, um, surprise projects that come out of nowhere in addition to whatever the hell you were doing. So, so you know, I love that. Starting, yeah. When you start a company and they go, Hey, yeah, we want a, a project that's going to go in different, uh, different countries. And so, oh, e-learning. All right. We know it's a learning already because you're not going to be like, you know, okay, great, great, great. So, all right, learning. All right. And, you know, I may hit them a week or two weeks later and go, Oh yeah. Remember that learning project you're doing? Yeah. Okay, great. That's great. But uh, the director, blah, 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 is going to go and visit. And so they also want to do online stuff face-to-face -face as, as a side to the thing. What? Yeah. Facilita what? We need a facilitator guide. Oh, yeah, I've been work. there, man. Uh, oh, you're going to yeah. need a facilitator guide, participant guide. And yeah, you're going to need a website, collect all the stuff. What? What? <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, well, don't worry about it. You got a team of six people, figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. No, I, I yeah, and yeah. it's funny because it is, it is like, um, we don't, I mean, 
let's, let's be real. You do a master's uh, degree in like a traditional, uh, a traditional school, you come out and you've got all these school projects and everything went perfectly. You were your own subject matter expert. So, so it's awesome. And then this hits and that's hard. And that's hard because I feel like a lot of times you get, you feel like it's, it's something you did. Like, did they not like me? You know, like you start thinking about that. They don't think I'm credible. Like you start questioning that. So, Mm -hmm. but those are, but those are really good, uh, good advice. So you walk in with that, that mindset, no dates on contracts. I love that's true. Upfront payment. And that's that's like contract. Yeah. Upfront payment. And what this means is basically, line up a few items up front so like hey we're gonna go for three months who's going on vacation yeah first thing right yeah <laughs> who's going on vacation oh mm-hmm. uh, here i am i'm going on vacation this time or whatever especially if no, they're in I'm... europe they go for right. your vacation for two yeah. months man those guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> we got 50 holidays we're talking about <laughs> <No>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. same mary same mary uh uh, when or here so we taking this day off <laughs> we gotta go to church <laughs> um yeah so it's uh yeah but the, i mean it's, it's the beauty of things right and, and it's, it's the lessons you learn from that, that then you start looking at what you do and you realize okay there's nothing more valuable than experience uh. and that means practice what the heck you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. right and so that's the thing, because we, we like to get into a lot of, you know, semantics in our industry, right? So I was like, oh, experience, man. Yeah. Just pull the drums up, man. Experience. Like, yeah, you know, you can have experience in many different ways. Sure. You could yeah. be all like, oh, my God, out of body experience and this learning. But the question is, are you experienced? Experiencing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's the key thing. You yeah. can read about it. You can watch videos all you want until you do it. You're oh, yeah. not going to know. Anything. No. So, you got to get on that bike. You got to yeah. scrape your knees, that, man. That, that's why I tell people, it's like, you, you're doing all these programs because some people try to defend them sometimes. Oh, well, sometimes people just need awareness. <laughs> sometimes people just need information. Mm-hmm. I said, well, then that's not a course and that's not a learning intervention. It's just information. Yeah. Put it on a damn website, put it in Slack send it to people take a have a look at it yeah they don't need to be sitting on a computer doing 30 minutes of bullshit because you have an information yes <laughs> you know? totally and then <laughs> you know? and it's and it's like i get it i mean that sounds to me more like a marketing campaign awareness yeah. and and but that's great and we can and we can do that the cool kids in marketing don't want to do that though yeah yeah right <laughs> you know yeah I mean? they're too cool for that I, I, yeah i wish i could work in marketing i really wish i could work in marketing i'm, I'm gonna find my way you do <laughs> you do i mean really we do right yeah Half i mean we do it do. as a business owner you have to do it but i'm saying like if you can work for marketing and enterprise that'll be fun yeah because yeah. imagine you, just, you go to all the cool stuff you hang out with sales you know and you get all the latest software whatever you want that's right you get to put out cool gifts yeah yeah that's awesome (laughs) yeah like you know so tell me as far as um you you're coming into let's say these uh situations where you're going to pitch ideas that people aren't necessarily ready for so how Mm. do you overcome their resistance like they say oh we want awareness or we want information so how do you get them to buy into your ideas? What's your strategy? Yeah, that's a, that's a very, that's a, that's a beautiful question. Um, and the thing about it is, look, uh, I'm going to be real because a lot of people are not real. Just like, I think just like doctors don't really follow a clear ethos, right? Like they don't try to change your behavior. They just give you meds. Yeah. <laughs> then when I'm working with a client, if they want a turd, I'll give them a turd. If you're going to pay for it, great. We'll do it. I mean, at a certain point, we'll make that decision. You know what I mean? Because I can try to change people's look into things. And I do. That's the first thing I do. So what do you mean? So what do you think that's going to achieve? What, what do you feel that's going to do? You know, get those answers. But in the end, you know that there's going to be some kind of dynamic where the person's going to try to just basically... Whoever's paying you is going to be the person who's going to try to like 
they want to be everybody wants to be a designer right everybody wants to make the decisions and everybody wants oh you know i like this button but can you change it this way or whatever it's like absolutely that's going to be a change and that's going to cost you <laughs> right so um at a certain point so i'll give you a couple of changes but when you start getting to three four different changes now you know that's going to be more money that's it that's all it is so the interesting thing is that what are, you know ethically what we should do is say you know what i'm good this is not for me <laughs> you know but otherwise we'll never eat <laughs> so so you know when people say oh we want to oh we want a quiz at the end we want a 10 question quiz okay and what is that going to you know how do you because today you don't really need a quiz anymore for an lms you know for LMS communication, you don't need that anymore. So why why do you need a quiz? Well, no, because it has to have a quiz. You know, the quiz is what we've it, always done a quiz. Are. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, yeah. Well, the thing about quizzes though is that they make great quiz makers. But oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they make great quiz test takers, right? They don't they don't really do anything for people doing the work. So yes, do you need the exposure to the to the retrieval, right? People yeah. always go with that. Oh, we need exams because you need the retrieval. Well, the idea is, okay, great. So if you need exams to the retrieval, I can buy into that. That is, okay, cognitively sort of okay, science-wise, great for the recall. But how does that experience work out? So the people, are you expecting the people to go back and take that quiz another 50 times yeah or 20 times are you telling me they're just taking the quiz one time does the job so you know let's answer those questions would you rather have practical application of the skills they need to do would you rather instead of you know the same quiz that you have in there could be actually a decision making process right? and you've done this i've seen your i've seen your work and I've done this in my work too, which, yeah. But it's, listen, if they want, if they want, like I said, if they want the turd, we'll give them the turd. You're going to pay me anyway. You're going to pay me the same amount of the money. Great. Now, if I really want to change something, and if I really want to do something cool, because I want to do something for my portfolio, and I really, really want this customer to really, you know, <laughs> get the real benefit of things, then... And they deserve it, by the way. <laughs> That's another one. Then I will put a prototype out there for them. You got to show it. You got you to show it. You got to let them test drive it. So it's kind of like pulling out like, you know, oh, I want to buy a, I want to buy a Chevy. You know, I don't know where is the Chevy today. Fiesta or whatever. Ford Fiesta. I want to buy a Ford Fiesta, right? Because I only need to get through here to the grocery store. Yeah. Now check out this Ferrari. You can still go to the grocery store, but there's going to be a lot of people looking at you and then see what happens. But you have to show something. You can't yeah. just, you know, when people, people block you off when you start describing stuff. Yes. Yes. Because we talk techno babble, right? We talk about yeah. stuff. Uh, that we too. Get. Yeah. That's a great point. We like to get into our, it's an inter, you know, instructional designers, it's an interesting breed out there, different people, right? So it's a lot of snobby people. There is, there is. Oh, it, how yeah. dare you? How dare you put the floating character there? <laughs> oh, never put a floating character. It has to be consistent everywhere. Why is this 0. 0.3 inches from the right when the other one is 0. 0.4 inches from the right? Mm. Well, yeah, okay. That, I get that consistency is good. But sometimes we go a little overboard. <laughs> yeah. I love what you said, though. Um, and you're right. Most people don't admit that. Uh, there's, there's projects where I've been, where I said, okay, I got to let go here. Like this is gonna, mm -hmm. this is going to be a painful, painful process. Right. I just got to fight everything. So I'm just like, what's my win here? Oh, my win here is one, I'm getting paid Two, I get to play around with this. This is awesome. Okay. This is going to yeah. build some of my skills. <laughs> I always think I'm like, is there a skill here that I can build or refine that I can use in my next project? A lot of times mm. it's that if it, if it's not everything, you know, then I'm like, what am I growing here? What skill can I flex? Even if it is on the back right. end, some mechanics. So 
I totally, like you said, if they want that, they're paying and it's going to be a battle. You just got to build it and move on to the next awesome client. Yeah. Really. yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the advantage I say, you know, that's the only advantage of being on your own. Yeah. But I think in both perspectives, people do that. And I've been to write a blog post of this. You probably, I probably will at some point. But I think in, in regardless of the case, because you're always in a support function, right? Mm-hmm. L&D in general is a support function. Um, I don't know. A lot of people out there like to think that they're like, oh, no, we're running the business. <laughs> but like, no, <laughs> business people run the business. Yes. You support them. So, yes. Okay, great. But because we're under support function, we uh, we tend to we we'll, we'll tend to get into that piece. We we'll tend we we'll tend to get into that that part, which is like, no, nah, I just want this. I just need I need you to give me this, or I need you to give me that. And the good thing is that no matter what, you're always going to be dealing with the BS. Somebody's somebody's BS. You're going to be dealing with. Always. So if you work in a company. And, you know, you work in as an enterprise ID in a company, you're doing instructional design stuff. It's either your boss or it's either going to be the business person and a combination of the two because there's a relationship and, you know, they don't want to screw that up. So you can't be the one with the riding in with the horse, you know, <laughs> Braveheart style going, this is bullshit because then your job is at stake. And in the same situation, if you go, if you work for a client, you have to go, you're going to have to put in with client BS at some point or something. Yeah. Sometimes you get lucky and you get pretty awesome clients, right? That they know they get it. They get yeah. the feeling. Okay. You just, you got to savor those wins, put them in your cookie jar and be like, oh, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. 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 yeah, they, yeah. they rocked it. And then you show that project to everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. These but guys that, got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you can be like, yeah, look at this cool thing we did. Um, yeah. And the other part is like, you know, a lot of love, ton of people want to get into instructional design today and they think and i tell and i mean i usually tell people it's like you can't you're not an instructional designer today is not a one-dimensional thing anymore and you have to know digital design you have to know e-learning you have to know web you have to know all that stuff you have to be able to produce something it's not yeah you may get lucky and work with a team maybe Maybe with a team, like sometimes you might get subcontractors in your projects, right? You may get lucky and work with a vendor. And, and that's fun because you're working with the vendor and sometimes things get segmented, right? Okay, you're going to do the writing. You're going to do the, this. You're going to do the cool effects. You're going to do that stuff. And that's, a, that's an awesome experience. But in most cases, you're working on your own. And companies that hire right now, people are hiring like crazy. The, the job market is just ridiculous. It's a, it's a, it's our market right now. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's in contracting positions and full-time, whatever. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. But the thing is that there's a lot of ambiguity in our field, right? And that comes from the, from the business side that comes from yeah, the HR people posting, you know, they don't know, they just post whatever. So, yeah. oh, we want a unicorn. Right. Yes. Everybody so, wants a unicorn these days. We want the unicorn with 55 different skills, but we're only going to use about five of those. Yes. And <laughs> right. pay so, you for one. <laughs> and pay you for one. Yeah. So that <laughs> that's that's the thing. So it's like we have ambiguity in the field. So when somebody says I'm an instructional designer, that could mean, you know, you're you're the you're the storyline pony, you know? Yeah. You do storyline stuff. And or you're the captivate pony or whatever. Um, but that could also mean that you're doing the whole thing. Yes. And, and that could also mean that you're managing an LMS and you're managing the whole end cycle from the analysis all the way to, I put it in the LMS is ready to go. Let's go. And you're still running, uh, instructional webinars. Yeah. And you say, exactly. (laughs) So it's, yeah. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's the world. Uh, you have to be a e-learning designer in a way as well. So, yeah, it's huge, and you're right. Digital is a huge part of that. Even understanding media, because w- like, mm-hmm. how can you engage people if you have no idea what they're looking at every day? Right? right. You got to be curious about that stuff. So, yeah, I think in general, you know what? In general, even if we think about it, a professional today, regardless of the case, needs those skills. Uh-huh. Like a professional needs at least to know how to 
you know, grab an app and make a video real quick and or something to explain the process or use Nagit or use something like that, you know, and and get something going. Mm-hmm. The presentations, it makes a difference, right? If you have a good skills, I mean, that's actually what how a lot of instructional designers get started anyway, right? That's true. So like, yeah. like Cami Bean or, you know, like I, myself or something like, you know, I make a cool PowerPoint and people go like, wow, this guy, this, that was pretty cool. You did that? Yeah, I did that. I was like, oh, can you make the training stuff? And that, there you go. Now you're yeah. an instructional designer. Yeah. Yeah. Fall in. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So gamification, uh, I, it's definitely a huge part of your work. Um, mm-hmm. And tell, first off for, just to clarify, what's your definition of gamification? Yeah, so I have a, I have a mixture of what Carl Cap puts out. And, uh, you know, he, Love that to, dude. he was, yeah. to me, he was the, uh, or Kalp, you get it right, because it's a German name. <laughs> but Oh, damn, I've been saying the, it wrong all these years. I know, it's not Cap. Yeah, <laughs> okay. he told me, was like, it's Kalp. I was like, all right, oh, cool. damn, okay. Well, now yeah. I know before I talk to him. But I can see Deutsch, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, I met, I, first time I saw him, I was in St. Louis, I was living in St. Louis and I went to the local ATD chapter stuff and he was doing, that was the first, the first book he put out, right? Gamification of learning or something like that. And so that kind of caught my attention and then I, it made sense. It kind of clicked and I started looking into it and, and, and so my thing always, whatever I do is I don't stick around with the L and D people. Like I see the L and D proponent of it but really to me sometimes in a lot of things lnd for me feels like we're a little village that nobody goes out of the walls and then <laughs> this one person <laughs> this one person goes out to the woods and On goes, the quest hey, hey check it out oh mental reality and they come back right and then like, everybody's like oh, oh yeah. and then you're like oh and then there's only one person that knows this and i'm like uh, no, it's gonna be like a whole thing. So I went to check out like game design, the game designers, and reading papers, research papers, and so I ran into different things, and I formulated my own, you know, attack mode to this or strategy to that. So to me, in general, if you think about gamification, I mean, marketing has kind of marketing started with this whole thing and, and the incentives and the rewards, and that's a lot of extrinsic stuff. But if you think about it, is the application of game mechanics to something that wasn't meant to be game, a game based uh, endeavor. And so when we th- think about learning, it's a lot of the engagement pieces that we don't usually get or a different methodology or framework to bring that in. So mechanics really in, in essence to just break it down, mechanics are sort of like the rules of a game, mm-hmm. right? The rules that need to be followed. So in other words, if I tell you, hey, let's play a game, you're gonna say, okay, what is it? And I'm going to say this. And if you recognize it, you know what the rules are. So if I say Monopoly, you know what we're doing. Yeah. Right? If I say um, Tic-Tac-Toe, you know what we're doing. And if I say, I don't know, Fortnite, you probably know what I'm doing. You know, so if it's a video game, right? So <clears throat> except when you get into interesting situations like Minecraft. Let's do Minecraft. Well, what the hell are we doing? Because you can do anything in Minecraft. <laughs> you know, so that, that, that's the evolution of game design in many ways. So, you know, I, I was a I was an avid video game player when I was a kid. You know, I was the whole, you know, with Pong with, and is, you know, sitting in the box and stuff overheating and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah and so that's the, the, the advantage of being Gen Xer, right? You remember a lot of stuff like, yeah, you guys don't know crap. Man, remember, I stayed uh, playing up Tetris till 3 a.m. Yeah, I remember morning, playing man. with a little stick and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was and, awesome. Uh, and that you're supposed to be a person. Yeah. So, <laughs> But that's great because it worked with our imagination. So uh, to the, to, in essence, is applying those game mechanics, applying those to a learning situation. And, but there are other, there's this framework called the MDA framework, it's mechanic dynamics and aesthetics. And there's a guys that were from Northwestern University that kind of came out with this uh, concept. And a lot of game designers um, apply this or look at it. So a client's dynamics. So what happens, you know, what are the motivator, motivation uh, pieces of a game and what players do within a game and playing against others or with others mm-hmm. so those are the dynamics and sometimes you can't really control those but you can have a general idea of what it is so for example one of the mainest 
the, the latest things I'm doing is I do escape rooms in Storyline or escape rooms in, and now for even for VILT, for online stuff. And that was an interesting one because it's basically just taking what I was doing in Storyline, which was kind of like a digital course thing to now do it in a VILT setting. So I was like, okay, how do I do it in a VILT? Because I'm thinking I'm using Zoom and I'm going to use breakout rooms. Okay, good. But what's the next thing? So yeah. the, each breakout room can be escape room. And then there are elements in there we're throwing in and instructions you get with people and they have to like, you know, think outside the box and not be limited to what they're at. at. So we tested this before, um, <clears throat> You know, a good friend also, uh, you probably heard of her, Monica Cornetti. Yes. She's amazing, Sententia, Gamification. And so those are the two people that, you know, I started looking at and I'm going like, okay, uh, Carl brought a lot of the theory back, the alignment of learning theories and, and the motivation and game and engagement. Of course, he's done a lot more since then. And then you have Monica who came from out of left field, right? Because Monica was like, he was teaching people how to do taxes or some shit, like some boring <laughs> stuff, like accounting. Hey, that's fun for accountants. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. It's fun for accountants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you see my latest abacus that I just bought? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sexy. But, yeah, sexy. Uh, but um, <laughs> but the she was doing that. And then she's like, this got to be something better. Or somebody was saying, this is boring, even though the person was there to learn from her. So that's how she jumped into, she found out gamification and started doing the thing. So it's great. It shows you that, look, it's not a thing where you have to be an expert of anything. You don't have to be, you know, a, a learning expert, super instructional designer or learning theorist. You just need to understand the whole purpose of gamification is really engagement and motivation. And the reason being is because we love to play regardless of the case, right? Yeah. No matter what you do, you love to play. So the, you don't have to think that it's a video game. You don't have to, th- it's, 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 it's playing, it's a game. So when you say let's play, sounds different than saying let's learn. Oh yeah. Right? Yes. But you can learn through play. So, oh, and we do. I mean, yeah. and most animals do, really. They, yeah. right? They yeah. learn through play. So, exactly. it, so I, I feel like gamification has like this cool wrapper around it. And because I've, I've talked to people and they're like, yeah, we, we, can we do some, like, I've seen like spec sheets where they're like, we want it to be gamified. I was like, do you mm. even know what that means? <laughs> like, what do you mean by that? Right. So, uh, so what kind of questions do like, do people come at, t- like when they say, uh, when you propose that, do you propose that things are gamified or do people like when they hear gamification, they go, yeah, we want some of that, Alex. Like, do they? Yeah. Some people, some people get really, you know, it, it, we, we, as you know, a lot of people don't like to accept this, but our industry is like so ruled by marketing, you know? So a lot of the things that we sometimes just take seriously out of nowhere it's because someone came out with a clever label i it, i think it's usually vendors out in exhibit rooms in conferences that's what i think that's where it comes from I and do. i and i think i know that because i also have purposefully sat through sales pitches or sales presentations in conferences to see what they say uh, if they're using learning theory at all or if they're using anything that kind of aligns this thing and usually they don't it's all no. about you know like yeah. micro learning bite size little you know yeah. they're using <laughs> fun words bite, right yeah, yeah bite size digestible Chunked, what chunky. the heck is that like, yes digestible oh. yeah all you're gonna do is get like learning diabetes if you don't watch it so <laughs> so <laughs> eating all the time yeah but um no but the <laughs> but the funny part is on that is, yeah, you're going to get people going like, oh, yeah, I heard a gamification. Yeah, let's do that. And so anything that we have in the industry is always gets a superficial treatment sometimes, right? So people grab it because it's a, it's a way to make money. So right now, virtual reality is that thing. It, right? Oh, man, is it everybody, ever? Everybody's on it. Oh, oh virtual, yeah. Virtual yes. Reality. And I'm like, you guys haven't like mastered gamification yet or, yeah. but now we're moving into virtual reality. And exactly. everybody, everybody sees the potential and I'm like, show me something yes. good. Show me yes. something good. 
Yes. So, and, and I mean, there is potential. There is a good oh, potential yes. there. But, but you have to then consider the context of everything you're doing, where it is. You know, so a device costs 300 bucks today. How many devices are you going to buy? Um, how are you going to deliver that if people are working remote? All that good stuff. You have to figure out all those specifics and then whether that's going to be worth doing it. So gamification is something that can be applied. doesn't have to be VR. doesn't have to be AR. And AR really to, be, to look at it, and the reason why I support a lot of AR is because it really is a very low cost, super easy to make performance support. Yeah, element. yeah. You know? It's so underutilized. I mean, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's underutilized. Yeah. So that, that's where I see there's value to it because I'm telling you, hey, look, you only need a $45 license for a tool like uh, Sapphire, let's say, right? And you're making it augmented reality. And it could be just straight up decals and places. I mean, I won an award doing this thing. I did it for a company or an onboarding, an onboarding type of experience with uh, augmented reality. But gamification has been taken from the beginning as a, extrinsic reward type of thing. Oh, we're going to add some badges, points. Boom, you're done. There it is, buddy. Gamified. Leaderboards. Ha, oh, leaderboard, yes. Right? So, yeah, those are good things if you use them in the right context. Oh, yeah. So I got a sales sales team, a bunch of competitive folks, right? That's great. Unless you're the one at the bottom. Yeah, and, like, right. And then, but even the sales, even, but that the, in sales, usually, yeah. You yeah. don't get a lot of people that are not going to be like, why am I at the bottom? What the hell? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just going to work their butt off. I'm yeah. getting this done. <laughs> totally. So the leaderboard, you can do the leaderboard. All right, great. Points, they have to symbolize something. Badges need to symbolize something. Mm -hmm. You know, badges is nothing new. Scout, you know, Boy Scouts be using badges. Uh, military uses badges. They're called medals. They're called yeah. ribbons. Yeah. And when I look at my ribbons, from my military service, I can tell you, oh, I got this one when I did this, this. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like they scar, mean something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, when you get a scar, you're, you're like, oh yeah, this one was when yeah. I was playing, I was five, you know. <laughs> my brother. Hey, <That's> <laughs> yeah. but we're we're, you know, when people apply this stuff and it's wrong, it's kind of like, you know, oh, you logged in. You got the login badge. <laughs> Man, oh God. Mm. Check mark. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, check mark. Right. Oh. Uh, like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. You use the slider. You got the slider badge. <laughs> so I think you, you can do a lot of very interesting things. And I, it's funny because somebody was asked questioning, um, somebody was questioning escape rooms. Uh, people that, that I respect a lot sometimes. Uh, so, well, not sometimes. I respect them a lot, but <laughs> sometimes they make comments that like, okay, I see what you're saying, but let's talk about this. So escape rooms, uh, somebody went on LinkedIn was like, hey, skate rooms, what the hell? Everybody's like, oh, skate rooms, what is that? Mm, eh, what's the point? That type yeah. of thing, right? And I said, like, yeah, I teach the skate room stuff in Storyline. And from the design perspective, I usually tell people, it's like, look, it's not about the skate room. The skate room is just an incident tool. It's an incident. It's a problem solving thing that happens. It's about the story and it's about the, it's still about the learning and the content and the context of the learning. So, for example, if you want to learn security, right? IT security, that's one of the big ones people need to do. Oh, yeah. Well, you can go about it the way that everybody goes about it, which is okay, making a learning course, right? IT security is very important. You should always care about this and care about that. And mm -hmm. here's an email. See that email? That's a suspicious uh, address. And okay, and now the, here's a quiz. Here's a knowledge check. Here's a quiz, and you're done, right? Well, people are kind of drawn out by compliance because of e-learning. It's probably one of the biggest things that hurts e-learning in any way. Yeah. It's because people are used to compliance. So, ah, oh, this is another compliance course. Let me just get through it. Can I get to the quiz? Can I just pass the quiz? Yeah. Thank you. Right? Or you can then put a frame a story around it. First of all, give a choice. So within the same about boring course that you have or same, you know, regular content course that you have, give the person a choice. Hey, you can do this or go ahead and play uh, Hack Doom or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Doom, yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> Curiosity, so, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, Hack Doom, what is that? It's That's a, great. Welcome, Hack Doom or something, right? So now you're, 
you know, you're, <clears throat> uh, you have been called to the building and uh, there's a welcome to the new work job place or whatever, right? So let's you know, put it in context. Like, you know, well, you're, you're new in the company and uh, we're going to show you some of the greatest things we have here. And here's the floor and here's that. Oh, you got an email uh, or, you know, here's your guide. Here's your guide, your unbut person or whatever, right? Here's the person that's going to help you out. So now you're applying the whole thing that, you know, academics have known as just animated pedagogical agents, APAs. Don't say that backwards or fast. It's going to mess you up. But now you're applying something where you have a character that's going to help you out. So that character is going to be the peer, it's going to be the expert, or it's going to be the novice. Either way, you can jump in there. And so there's a story now. There's a story, there's a story context, and you can make it very relevant to what real life is. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. welcome to the welcome to the welcome to the company. You know, then in the tenth floor we got the servers, and this floor we got this. So I did one before where I we we plan it out and we say, hey, welcome to welcome to this. You start in the elevator, basically. Hey, you need to go to the tenth floor. Uh, that's where your office is at. All right, we go to the tenth floor. You hear the music, you know, little girl from Ipanema or whatever. Dun, 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 you know, and you go up. You open the door to, the, to your cubicle. You get to the cubicle. Here's your laptop. Here's your stuff. So you can play. Yeah, let me click on the laptop. See what's up. So now you get information. And then this person pops up and goes, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the company. We have a special meeting for you on the 12th floor, room 12B. So go ahead and go over there. So, oh, okay. So you create some kind of incident. Something's going to get you to the room. And that's the situation. So the incident could be an emergency. It could be something. But, you know, in this case, some character shows up. Hey, I'm your guide. My name is Bob, blah, 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 blah. Join me in 12B. All right, great. So you go to 12B. And now you get to 12B. There's a bunch of servers in there. And there's a screen. There's a TV screen. On the TV screen, here pops up a guy with a mask, kind of like your hackers. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, hi, welcome. You know, <laughs> so like, why are you following people and whatever, you know, that stuff. It turns out that Bob was not even an employee. Bob is someone that was fired five years ago. And there's a vendetta against the organization you're working with, which happens to be a bank. And now you need to infiltrate or you need to help them hack into the servers. Nice. So by learning all this crap, you're getting the content mixed in, right? Like Mm -hmm. IT security, how hackers do things, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, you can spin that out in many different ways and get the same sort of results, get get a little more contextual result into things. Mm-hmm. But that's like, escape room rather than, you know, it's not, you're not starting with, hi, welcome to the IT escape room. Yeah. Then it gets gimmicky, right? It does. Yeah. You're just, you're just, it's, I mean, it's just placeholder basically, right? Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. every, if you say escape room, everybody gets that, right? right. Like, okay. And now you can move forward with. Yeah. That. And so I people do it. So there's a, there's a complexity of design there because some people okay. do and some people don't. So some people never seen escape room. That's true. Like they That's never true. played it, never seen about it. They're like, what? And then you're like, hi. So by not calling it, you know, oh, the IT escape room, you're saying like, okay, great. Well, it looks like these guys are not too good. Why don't you get out? And so you're trying to get out. And, oh, you're locked in. What the heck is going on? Or you're locked in this room while well, you're in an escape room situation. <laughs> so maybe there's some clues you can find. And then yeah. you got some clues. And then you got things like a, your USB drive. Hmm. Or should I plug this in? <laughs> you know, it's like, should you plug that in? I don't yeah, know. Right. So all those little things, you make decisions, you find the consequences. But yeah, it's uh, the key thing is just not make it gimmicky. You know? So it's kind of like what I find gimmick, gamification to be super gimmicky. It's like things like, you know, dare I mention, um, Axonify or something like that, you know? So it's like, where it's like, oh, Space Invaders. And you get a question. So it's like, okay, really? Like, who's playing Space Invaders? Like, where am I? 85? <laughs> you know, so that, yeah, those are the kind of things. I mean, and that's just an example. Not that they're doing anything wrong. They made a ton of money doing what they do, but. But that's the thing. That's the case gimmicky. It was like, okay, when you go to work, are you really going to play Space Invaders? And what is that? 
helping you with anything, right? Yes. So yeah, yes. when you go to work, are you going to escape rooms? Maybe. <laughs> depends, Maybe, but it's but in context, right? But, but you're, it's in context, right? And that's and that's huge. That's why you know, right. for me, pirate themes and leprechaun themes. I'm like, oh man, that's another one. That's huge ones, especially when I think companies should step away from that because when people start learning about the history of pirates, then you you're gonna see that it's not the Disney stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the yeah. It's not the it's well, not no. Captain Jack Sparrow. A lot of four letter words in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and the other thing is that I mean, I feel like. People are already removed from the context by looking at a computer screen. So if you can just add some kind of uh, decisions or, or markers or visual cues that when they hit the real environment that there might have that, remember that, that to me is so important. And I don't want it to be a pirate or a leprechaun. Right. Yeah. That, those, those are key things. And, I, I, and that can lead, you know, for a lot of people, it leads into... Again, you get into the gimmicky thing and then it becomes, there are people that might look at your stuff and go, why is this? This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so you have to respect the autonomy of the adult learner, regardless of the case, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to have some kind of autonomy. So yes. it's like, I don't want to play the stupid stuff. Then let me just read, like, for example, I'll give you a biggest example that I like in my life all day. My wife, my wife hates videos. She doesn't do YouTube. She doesn't like YouTube. She, she's like, Give me a freaking PDF and let me read what I need to do. I'm good. Wow. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I'm not a reader. So I'm not going to, I could read because I went to school, obviously, like <laughs> master, you know, master degree stuff. We yeah, have yeah. to read a lot, yes. but, but it's not my choice. It's not, it's not what I go. I mean, if you can give me a video that I can get like the points and I can escape across, then I'm good. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my thing. That's my jam. So yeah. Give people autonomy. Like, you know, and we get this wrong from a cat from academia and all of that. That's why schools, hopefully, well, hopefully it'll get better. But because of the pandemic, unfortunately, because it hasn't been a good thing and a bad thing yeah. because of the pandemic. Now, all these universities are all about e-learning and are all about doing stuff. Content but dumps. when we started, yeah, when they started it's wrong, first of all, they're going to make the same mistakes that, you know, corporate learning has done. But when they started, it was wrong because, you know, you got things like Canvas, right? So Canvas, the biggest LMS for schools, they had their LCMS. They have the capability of creating web pages. So professor is using those as e-learning, right? So like make a web page, put all the stuff in there without any assistance from visual design or instructional designer. And that's, and that's what, you know, that's what some institutions are doing. And I've seen it. I've seen it. It's not like I'm making it up. So. yeah and i've worked in that context too so yeah, yeah it's just yeah it is it is it's a different approach definitely it is, and it now is it's a different been... approach so you know it's it i think the main thing that people have to understand is like you're not you can't just you can't think you're innovating because you're doing the same thing you were doing in one area and now you're going to do it in another area because it's electronic yeah <laughs> yeah it doesn't make it you know you have make to it. make it like native to the platform, right? Basically, yeah. think about yeah. that. Yeah. So, okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to get last two questions. All right. So yeah. uh, what's your favorite app or tool that you can't live without these days? Ooh. Can be for work or personal, whatever. That's a good one. Well, for work, I mean, I, I touch Starland pretty much every day, uh, of course. But um, I think app in general to live and work LinkedIn app wise, if it's not designed, LinkedIn is like the, the you know, because I don't do the traditional vendor thing, right? So, so I, I don't have to because of LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, I have like a bunch of followers. We're probably hitting 23, five or something like that, 23,000. And, um, and so I get work from there and I get work that I can give other people to from there and all the opportunities and i don't do the problem with linkedin is turning to a flea market too you know so, like you know oh yeah when, you, when you, you think you're working in a company and people start bugging you about oh yeah you work for this company dell <laughs> we offer the services blah blah okay great yeah whatever i don't need to know but now you start working on your own and then it's worse 
Yeah. I help businesses like yours do this. I help business. <laughs> I saw you have a web page. Yeah, I get people. I get people promote. I get people pitching me for e-learning courses. I'm like, dude, have you even checked my free? Yeah, that's probably from me. <laughs> that's what I do. How can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's hilarious. But you know, LinkedIn has been a, a critical one, uh, definitely for exposure for getting your content out there, and. Um, I actually find the mobile app is so much more intuitive. Like yeah. it's fabulous. Yeah, yeah the whatever yeah, yeah, they, they have they have made some better. great improvements. Definitely make some great improvements in that. I think um apps, you know, I, I've been very interested about being very interested in different things. But I mean, every day that I use every day, I mean we're we're right now talking through Zoom. I use that every day and for what I do. And it's become, you know, uh it's become like the new Coke, right? For like, so now for <laughs> webinar or for conferencing, people don't say that anymore. It's like, hey, let's do a Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. so totally. now you just do it a Zoom. But I think uh, later apps, I mean, I've seen some interesting stuff like Synthesia for like the synthetic videos and stuff like that We're using oh. AI. And yeah, so you can, I have a video on my YouTube channel. I have something link later, but uh, yeah, it's um, these this guys are doing this AI stuff where, you can set up a character that's on video and you add the text to speech or you add your VO and the video character basically lip syncs the whole thing. Oh, that's cool. I, rem yeah. I remember like, you know, like eight, 10, maybe 10 years ago working with like Code Baby where they had like, yeah, it was like, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah, and, and yeah. the eyes moved around yeah. and followed the crazy, you around the crazy talk. And yeah. <laughs> and it was, um, yeah, and in, in the beginning, it's still around. Sidepile is one of the, but yeah, it's yeah. so expensive. It is but so Saipal expensive. Was, it's like 200 bucks yeah. a minute. <laughs> that, yeah, Sidepile was fantastic, though. Like Sidepile, the UI and everything is great. And it's it creeps some people out because, you know, they did the look around thing. If you move the mouse over, yeah. and they're like, <laughs> and I was hi, like, welcome to the Five website. minutes wasted because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trying to get, yeah, you're guiding the people's eyes. Uh, I did that in Starland one day too, just to mess with people. It's like, how do you increase retention? Well, they stayed five minutes longer just because the eye. Made... Over, over, over here, yeah. <laughs> but no, um, yeah. So that tool was interesting, and then you know, uh, Kate Udalova does the seven taps. So yeah. I like her approach in that, uh, where it's kind of like the Insta for learning. <laughs> so shout out to Kate. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, Insta, Insta for learning for micro learning, I guess. So you could do it. A cool. so quick seven tap, you know, the idea, right? Seven taps, just switch it around and uh, say that. So that yeah, it could be something like that. Sometimes I play with that and play some of the things. Cantasia has been also, you know, a big one. Really? I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. Camtasia has been super powerful for many different things. And then I didn't realize how much power Snagit has. Like Snagit is like, it's like, it's a hidden little like dark horse. I haven't horse played with knows Snagit in like years. Yeah, Snagit is like crazy. It has like, <laughs> it, revisit you know, it, Snagit. It, it's just, it has too much in it is what I would say. Because you usually you, you associate it, you know, the first thing you hear is like, oh, it's Snagit, that's just screen capture, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's a little more detailed screen capture, but it has all this little graphic effects and making GIFs and or GIFs, whichever bribe, which whichever tribe we're gonna be in. Yeah. But um, it's got all this potential, all these things. You can make short videos. You can make, uh, you know, um, the the with the captures that you have, you can make, you can grab through it through two or three images and pop a job aid because it has already like a built-in template for it. Damn. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I, that's I'm when, totally checking this out next. Yeah, awesome. you definitely get, you got to go to my go to my YouTube channel. I got a couple of videos in there. I did one video for that for Snaggy. I said, you know, Cantasia is my Cantasia is my my jam, but yeah, Snag is my peanut butter okay. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> or backwards. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So, last question: Tell us about um, uh, first off the academy that you're running and where people can go to learn more about you and your work. Well, definitely. Elearninglaunch.com. I mean, I started as a consultant for what, six, uh, seven years ago, doing stuff on the side. So I was working full time in enterprise and then I was doing like side gigs and stuff. And I was always looking, you know, always looking up to you because you were already, fly, you know, flying on your own and doing all this stuff. 
uh, and looking at other people like Kevin Thorne, you know, he's doing his thing too. And so I was like, man, I got to do this one. I got to do this. I got to do this one day, one day, one day. Right. And then, then you know, the final moment came uh, a year and a half ago. So stylearn.com, you can find me there. I picked up the blog again. I'm adding the memes. So if you want to laugh, you can find the last post. It's got all the memes that we're putting about r and in there. And then eLearn Launch. From there, you can get to eLearnLaunch.com. And eLearnLaunch.com is the Academy for Instructional Designers. And we cover everything from the whole process. Enterprise ID starts on September 13. That's eight weeks. And that's collaboration, online collaboration. You're going to meet a bunch of people and learn how to do instructional design as if you were in a company. But we teach uh, everything else. We teach Camtasia. We teach Storeline. I teach Storeline from zero to 100. <laughs> so I call it uh, zero to dangerous. <laughs> and uh, the combination of that is escape rooms. You know, we, we teach how to do escape rooms and Storeline. So, yeah, that's where it's at. Very excited. You become a new launcher. You got the backup and, and you can get coaching, direct coaching for me. That's the difference. So it's not learning. You know, there are some talking videos, but. You, you're going to have to make something. There's not just a certificate, you know, diploma mill. <laughs> so you, at the end, you have to produce work and I have to look at it and I have to tell you, all right, this is good. And if you do a really awesome work, then you get, I call what it's called, you're promotable. So that means I can put your stuff on my LinkedIn feed. It goes out to 23,000 people and you're going to get a lot of attention. There. So that's it. That's awesome. I love it. So they, they do the work. If they do the work, you will promote. Yep. It's a win -win. Yeah, they do the work and it's, and it's good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. Usually if you follow, I used to tell people like, look, uh, we had a super interesting, in our channel, you learn launch. Um, there's a channel on YouTube, you learn launch. The, we do the live episodes for the people that have, they wanted to first of all, share their story and they have made it. So right now we have like 13 or 14 episodes already. Nice. And uh, the latest one was with uh, Heidi Raganathan. And she was a teacher. And two and a half months, she knocked out all the freaking skills. Nice. And she got hired. Wow. So yeah. That's and dedication, got hired. baby. Yeah. And I got, and got hired. So that's been the biggest surprise for me. And the interesting kind of slap in the face in a way, like, you know, like reality life which is like, I remember landing my first job in L&D and I was making $50,000 and I was super happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was yeah. like, oh my God. And called my wife, oh baby, 50,000. And then my wife's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Right. And today is like laughable. And today the people that we're going through, some people are landing their first gig over 80,000. Yeah. So can you imagine that, like, come, you know, your first job into a career you were not a part of and just starting that way? I mean, to me, that's been the part that was like, damn, that's yeah, awesome. That is awesome. That is, yeah. that's our industry right now. It's like a, it's like this amazing renaissance and. It's blowing up. And, and you know, we should talk about this in more detail, maybe in another episode, but I'm also concerned. I, I you know, not to leave people with the bad news, but. I think this is a bubble. It is a bubble. Absolutely, it is a bubble. They're going to catch up. Things are going to go. It's going to come back to normal. It's going to yeah. or it's going to level out. Obviously, with digital, there's going to the demand is there, right? Yeah. And you're still going to have to prove your value, right? You're still yeah. going to have to prove that you your. I mean, we're always proving our value. I think in L and D, right? Because we are support. We are support. Yes. We are not Yours, the business. We are support. I will say those two though, and is that. We are support, and I think we're we're the only ones with the complex. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> I think marketing has the complex. To be honest, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blame yeah, it Mark on is like, oh, we're not. <laughs> they get all the money. They get all the money. They get all um, the money. They get the awards. I'm telling you, that's that's where to be. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe maybe it's our turn to to swap. I, I know. Hey, I've been. I'm telling you, I, I'm probably gonna look at some jobs and be like, yo. I've been doing this. as long as they pay more <laughs> yeah right that's a challenge yeah yeah cool well uh thank you for that uh thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me this was amazing i uh i learned a lot from you today actually this was thank you for being so honest and candid and also just sharing your strategies because um 
one of the things that I love, as you mentioned, about bringing people on, even in your program, and sharing with them some of that reality, some of your, some of the face plants that you've been, <laughs> you've experienced, which is huge, because the last thing you want to do is paint a rose colored picture for people. So they're, they're, they're not ready for reality, because it is a, mm. it's still a challenging professional job that needs, you know, needs for you to be prepared for that. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, I'm always glad that, uh, to get to play with you. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, for sure.